It's my great pleasure to talk about our recent results from the TD Cosmo collaboration that presents a measurement of the Hubble constant with time delayed cosmography. So uh, in our recent paper, TD Cosmo 4, uh, we present an update of the Hubble constant measurement based on relaxed assumption of the mass profile, density profile, and the addition of external data sets to constrain uh, the radial slope of the profile. Before going in detail, I would like to highlight uh, that this is uh, made with significant contributions of particularly junior people that are highlighted here in green. And not focusing here on the values of the Hubble constant, um, I want to highlight that this work has been validated on hydrodynamical simulations. It's been done blind as the previous uh, work from the TD Cosmo collaboration has been done as well and as we will move forward and that the full analysis is available on, on GitHub with all the ancillary data products and, and, and scripts to do so. So what is time delay cosmography? So this is a sketch um, where you see a quadruply lensed quasar, so a four times imaged background quasar that's been lensed around uh, a four gram massive elliptical galaxy. And this lensing effect not only leads to this beautiful distortion, but on, also to a time delay between the light travel paths uh, of the different images. And so this here, this is the, the equation that uh, leads to the predicted time delay. It involves the geometrical path difference. Basically, this is the Euclidean distance distance between the two paths with the lensing potential. This can be uh, seen as a diffraction index, so to speak, um, that leads to the dilatation due to the potential and an absolute scale. And I come to that, this is the important part about how we can use this measurement to infer the Hubble constant. So what we require to actually measure the time delay is a time variable source. So this can be a quasar or, or as originally proposed, a supernovae. When doing the monitoring over months or, or even a decade in certain cases, uh, we can measure the correlated uh, variability and thus the time delay between the arrival of the different uh, images. This allows us to constrain the so-called angular diameter distance so the, the distance scaling, as you, you wish, between the source, the lens, and the and us, the observable, so how far or how close this is. And so in turn, when we have this, we can turn it around and say, okay, how by how much needed the universe to be expanded to match these distances and thus infer the Hubble constant. So this measurement is completely independent of the local distance ladder of the CMB or other sound horizon probes and thus is fully complementary uh, and provides an independent distance anchor, scales and the age of the universe. Here in, in this next animation, here this is a, a one of the, the famous lenses RXJ1131 where the Cosmo Grail team here has light curves over more than a decade and you see the beautiful uh, light curves and, and how they match relative in, 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 in to produce a time delay measurement. So what is TD Cosmo? So the TD Cosmo project, this is an umbrella organization that has been found and emerged in, in the last year out of the former Holy Cow project collaboration, the Cosmo Grail, uh, collaboration that measures the, the time delays and the monitoring campaign. The STRIDES collaboration is an external collaboration with the Dark Energy Survey to look for quadrupoly lensed quasars in the DS footprint. And the SHARP uh, team who uses A adaptive optics from Keck to, to replace HSD imaging to do the modeling. So this, this PG-11-15 images from AO, while these other ones are from Hubble Space Telescope images. And the project uh, aims for uh, a few percent precision in, in the measurement of the Hubble constant by combining a set of lenses of individual measurements. 
and this has been done successfully in the past. Recent uh, results is Wong et al. 2020, and you see here the, 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 the work the, with the lead um, on the individual lenses that I came out of it. A quick um, go into single lens multiple data sets. So how, what we do on a single lens. So we compile different data sets. This includes high resolution imaging to measure the, the distortions in very detail, stellar kinematics of the deflector galaxy. This is uh, required to get an independent measurement of the lensing potential. I will come to that. Line of sight. Uh, distortion analysis or statistical analysis to, to infer the distortion caused by larger scale structure, which is important. And as previously measured, mentioned, that time delay measurement. So we can combine all this together and, and produce posterior, so to speak, of the distances. And in, in the updated work, in particular, what has changed is the role between the high resolution imaging on one side and the stellar kinematics on the other side. But before I go in there, I just want to highlight here our, our latest work on a single lens. This is from Shachib et al., uh, one of the DS lenses. Just illustrates you what kind of complexity that goes into the modeling and to measure these, these distortions. Where we have the real images on the left and the model uh, on, on the right. So we go to the pixel level of HSD images to, to, to produce and to constrain eventually, effectively. The, the lens models. So this uh, led, as you may or may not be familiar with, with the, with the Wong et al. Uh, result um, of the Holy Cow collaboration uh, for six uh, time delay lenses. Here you see the, the results leading to 2.3% uh, precision measurement on the Hubble constant. You see the independent Hubble constant inferences for all the, the lenses overall. So this is, assumes, this measurement here assumes that these uh, measurements and assumptions are independent and particularly assumes a specific profile mass family of the mass profiles. Um, in fall last year, we added a seventh lens and this is the DSJ0408. Uh, and this last uh, single lens analysis, which is, the most precise one among the lenses that we previously had. The seven lenses perfectly in agreement with the previous six. And we don't see any hint of random systematic errors among the different measurements or inferences. So these effectively then um, leads to this part of the paper, uh, of, the, of the latest work. So the Wong et al. results on the very top, and then the Millen et al. results is the TD Cosmo 1 paper, which splits the analysis between uh, assuming on one side a power law density profile for the main deflector, and on the other hand, uh, what we call a composite, so a, a, a constant mass to light ratio of a stars and an NFW a profile corresponding to the, the dark matter distribution. And if we run either one or the other inference, we get very consistent results among within the priors that we set on the mass concentration and mass relations that we have. So, what has changed since? So, or or since a while, what is very well known as the mass sheet degeneracy. This is a mathematical transform that leaves relative lensing observables such as relative image brightnesses, the distortions of the, of, of the rings or everything we see from imaging invariant, but changes the predicted time delay. So here is this lambda, is this, this mass sheet scaling factor. And you can, and this is the illustration here of how the profiles, the density profile and the, the convergence of the projected density profile is changing. And imaging data cannot distinguish between these types of transform. Though the Hubble constants that we infer out of it significantly changes by basically each of those uh, lines by 10%. And so this is an issue. This is known and pointed out since, since a while. There was a frequent paper here, a list of some that I found in, in the literature. And so there are two ways to mitigate it. One is with stellar kinematics as an independent measurement of the velocity dispersion. The other is making assumption on 
how we expected the scaling of the radial density profiles to be. And that was, and effectively here's the, the summary, the one slide summary of what has changed with this update is we're going from assumptions and data to assumptions and data where we put different weights on, on each of those. In particular here, here I just copy pasted the title of the TD Cosmo 4. Um, it has galaxy density profiles in there. So we're simultaneously constraining the radio uh, change in a mass density profile while making uh, inferences on the Hubble constant. And so what you see here is an illustration of how you can make, be able to interpret such a mass sheet transform physically. Um, so what dot, dotted line is the stellar profile, dashed line is the dark matter. And so when you transform an approximate mass sheet, uh, you can rescale the mass to light ratio and make the dark matter profile slightly more fluffier or, or, or concentrated in, in respect. And so really the focus in this time delay prediction here is on the, on the lensing distortion part um, that we are undertaking. And as I just mentioned previously, so velocity dispersion of the, of the stars, of the orbiting stars in the lensing potential can break this degeneracy. It's an independent probe of the, of the three dimensional mass density and thus has an impact. Uh, on it. And what you see here is for here the same 3D density profiles that we previously had. And here you see the change in what velocity dispersion we predict given a certain transform of our previously assumed mass profile. And so this can be used. So this is good news. The, the not so good news is that we need very precise measurement on the velocity dispersion to break this degeneracy. That's something we don't have to that level on hand for individual lenses today. And so what we do is we move to a sample of external lenses. Here, this is the SLAC's nice montage of galaxy galaxy lenses that's been selected based on the, the lensing galaxy to have a spectra at a higher redshift. And so we can use uh, these types of lenses and with its stellar kinematics, as I show here, to compare, okay, what is the prediction predicted versus measured velocity dispersion uh, when we do the same sophisticated and assumptions in the models that we put on our time delay lenses. So this is, uh, I emphasize also, Shachi et al. In, in PrEP that comes out very soon that goes in detail in, in the physical interpretation and actually did the analysis on those lenses uh, that we used in TD Cosmo 4. And so when we combine all of those together, we we get these results in terms of the density profile. So here I'm not talking about H0, this is in the next slide, and what we infer the density profiles to be given um, um, our uh, data set in hand. And you see here for lambda n equals one, this means the previous assumption, or in essence a power law, uh, while lambda n 0.91 is the best fit uh, value of our inference. And you see here the slight difference in the radial slope of these profiles. And when we do this jointly with the Hubble constant and other, uh, that's nuisance parameter or parameters that we, we need in our in inference, we get uh, these results here. So this is the key results of our paper. So what you see here is what the Hubble constant, obviously. Here is lambda in, so the internal mass sheet transform. And here in particular, here we mean the mean uh, mass sheet transfer relative to a power law of our entire population. So we describe these parameters on the population level. This is important um, to mitigate in interim priors that we set on a lens by lens basis. And it also requires the assumption that these lenses are self-similar itself. So this is a key that we make when, when we add these different data sets that, that are drawn from the same underlying population. On top of lambda in H naught, which is effectively this mathematical degeneracy, we here particularly have to take care on stellar anisotropy distribution. So whether it's the orbits are primarily radially orbiting in, in the lens or tangentially, changes how we see the in projection, the velocity dispersion. And so we need to get a handle to break the mass sheet degeneracy with uh, stellar orbits. And, and are thus affected by the, the mass anisotropic degeneracy. 
which effectively is, is this part here um, between the anisotropy parameter and the inferred mass density profile. And so to get a handle on this parameter, we added specifically integral field unit observations uh, for a subset of the SLAX lenses. So in total here in this analysis, we have seven time delay lenses from the TD Cosmos sample, 33 galaxy galaxy lenses from SLAX, which are primary at lower redshift, nine of which have VMOS IFU data that, that we're utilizing to inform the anisotropy distribution that you see here. And depending on what level of combination we do, what data set we add, TD Cosmo only leads to a high value with an uncertainty of about 8%. While when we add the SLAX data, the SDSS, uh, velocities, uh, kinematics, and in, in combination with the IFU, we get down to a 5% uncertainty and a significant shift. Though I have to mention that all the measurements are still statistically consistent, meaning we cannot rule out the previously made assumption based on this analysis and the uncertainties that we have here. So there, and, and the, the shift between adding this data is within the statistical expectation that we have uh, given the uncertainty of, of about 8% in the TD Cosmo only sample. And so this leads me to, to this um, last figure of our recent paper, which effectively summarizes the steps that, that, I, that I went through. And in the same color coding as the previous uh, slide, TD Cosmo only, and here you see the shifts and how uh, much they move and, and how much they shrink given the, the, the added precision or the added information and thus precision. So that's where we are now. But a key point I want to take away, um, make you take away, is not specifically the results or which one here you should prefer. It's more about the methodology and how we can move forward. So this is, this, this is the first step we're utilizing external data set in favor of uh, making assumptions on the mass density profile. And so this is just the first step in going forward where we can use eventually hundreds of lenses to do this analysis and, and include any data set possible that, that can add information to it. And, and so this is really a first step in that direction that can be, or we expect to be very promising. And so I wanna lay out the steps we are undertaking now to move forward. Way one, um, more data on the time delay lenses. Here in particular velocity dispersion measurements, better precision and spatially resolved ones to break the mass anisotropy degeneracy. That can be done with current facility VLT MUSE KEC, KCWI, and very soon a promising uh, upcoming uh, JWST. Um, we can also increase, or we are in the process of increasing the sample size of the time delay lenses that you see here on the right. Um, and we are actively working on those to add more TD Cosmo uh, lenses to the sample, and this will also increase the precision. The second approach is, as I mentioned, adding external data sets to an analysis. And here we only touch the surface of it with 33 lenses. We, even now we, we find like hundreds of lenses in the current uh, wide and deep imaging uh, campaigns and in the future with uh, Euclid, Rubin, Roman observatories, uh, we get the order of tens of thousands of, of, of galaxy galaxy scale lenses. And we need to make sure that the these external data sets we add a matching on the population level and in the selection effect to the TD Cosmo lenses. And that is doable with this large uh, sample. And we can also utilize external uh, local uh, kinematic data sets, such as from Sauron, Atlas 3D, massive surveys that have very detailed data on local elliptical galaxies and their uh, kinematic structure. And last but not least, uh, challenge yourself. So uh, we are improving uh, simulation products for better validation. Uh, we keep our measurements blind. We also, that has been proven very valuable, uh, participate and, 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 and run a blind analysis challenges that can bring new people on, on board and, 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 and we can check a previously applied um, methodology 
on this um, test data set. And for me personally, also very important, open source. Uh, in this last work, we provided the full end-to-end -end analysis uh, pipeline open source for reproductibility. And, and if someone comes and have uh, some other ideas of what priors of what data sets to put in, that should be doable fairly uh, easier. And my last is an advertising on public software. So here, Lenstronomy is, is one of the software that, that I lead develop and is an active use by a wide uh, uh, community. And it's been now take as part of the AstroPi affiliated uh, packages. And with that, I end and say thank you very much and look forward for the live uh, discussion questions.